Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I got a long request talking about sliding notes and uh, looking at the spectrum to find where a note, uh, when you're using a sliding note, starts and ends. Um, so that's the topic I want to cover today. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into that. All right, so I'm going to read the comment that we got um, for the request. It's a bit of a long one, so I'm probably going to read just a part of it. Um, but basically what he said is, uh, I ha have a question, a tutorial request in this song called Immersion by Deep Contact and Diapa Tox. You can hear a bendy port port portamento bass starting at 1 minute 23 seconds. I tried to recreate this, but I can't figure out how it, they made it. In the analyzer, you can see that the first upper bass note is only, or the first upper bass note is only played an octave higher, at least I think so. Uh, which I can confirm is true. With the second bendy bass in the uh, sixth beat, you can really see the harmonics shifting downwards. I tried to, an LFO on the chorus pitch. I wrote down some overlapping MIDI with portamento and automated pitch band, but I can make it so hearable like they did. Would be nice to uh, would be nice if you could give a tip or a tutorial in Serum on it. Keep up, keep up the great work. So um, this is the track that they were talking about. Um, in this case, the first upper note sits here, and then the second upper note, which is the bendy one, sits here, um, at, as you can see, in the sixth beat. Uh, so let's take a listen. So that's that. Uh, here's my recreation. Um, obviously, the sound isn't exactly the same. I'm mainly going to focus on getting that portamento to sound as nice as possible. Uh, but this is what I came up with. So let's go over my patch uh, real quick. Uh, if you're uh, an avid viewer of my channel, you probably already know that I have a standard bass patch. And this also started the same way. Uh, so we have Serum here. Uh, now what I've done here is one, I've added a lot of sub to this bass. As you can see, I've upped the sub here. Uh, by quite an, uh, a big amount actually. Normally a saw wave kind of looks like this a little bit more, uh, somewhat like this. And as you can see, we really went um, up like this to get a nice heavy sub, uh, which is useful for getting a very nice uh, portamento bass as well, because that sub is really going to give it its power. Uh, so then we designed our volume like this. Here you can see the volume envelope. Uh, this is set to envelope mode, 1 over 8 rate here, not 1 over 16 as it normally would be for my standard bass patch. Uh, but this case, because it's more progressive uh, offbeat, it's 1 over 8. Um, also the same for the filter cutoff here. This is just doing uh, the filter cutoff right there. And then we have the noise here, where I just added a little bit of noise. We have the compressor. I don't think it's doing anything in this case. Oh, it's doing a little bit, as you can see. Just kind of shaping off the top and making the transient a little bit less clicky, um, I guess. I didn't really look at that. Um, normally the compressor doesn't really do anything, so I tend to just turn it off. Um, but it's, it's there standard on the base patch when I open it up and I've kind of forgotten to update it. Um, but in this case it is actually doing something, so we'll keep it there. Uh, then we have my multiband dynamics. Uh, again, this is just to get the specific tone that I wanted. Um, so there isn't really anything important with these settings. We are just using this case to up the bass a little bit, as you can see. The bass and the first harmonic uh, are being turned higher uh, with this output gain here. We're also compressing this one here and then bringing it up a little bit. And here we're doing uh, a trick with the what we've also talked about before, where you have an expander on your bass click to make it more clicky. Um, so that this is kind of counteracting what the compressor was doing, but it ended up being a nice sound. And then we have some final EQing and a final limiter just to kind of shape the top off, as you can see. Now, personally, when designing this bass, I didn't really uh, take a look like specifically at the portamento. Um, what I've done here, though, is I've looked at the spectrum and what you can do for this really easy is just copy over this part and play it twice so you can loop it and then we can listen to it and you can hone in on the note where it stops so we 
can see this starts probably around A because this track is in A minor and it goes down to about D sharp, that kind of area here. And what you then can do is set up your pitch bend like this, as you can see, I've used the pitch bend and I'm just going to go down in a straight line for this one uh, because that's a very aggressive kind of pitch down. Normally when people tend to do like um, pitch bends down or up, they tend to do it like this, where they have like a little curve to it, but that's going to be less noticeable because obviously you're staying closer to your original pitch uh, for a longer time. So in that case, what we do is, um, I think I can, yeah. We're just using a standard one, just a straight line going down. And that gives us that, that kind of feeling there. And then you can play with the pitch down amount to set the amount. So minus 12 would be an octave. And then minus seven is nice. And minus five is also nice because you're going to the perfect fifth. And here we're going to the minor fourth, I think, or the fourth or whatever. And that's also a, a note that works well for these kind of pitch bends to end up on. You generally want to end up on a note that works well with the key. So the, the fifth or the fourth um, are very good notes to use there. So that's what you get then. Uh, what you could do in this case, if you're having trouble making it uh, sound as obvious as uh, in the pitch band, is use an EQ and kind of hone in on that frequency there where you're gliding towards. Because in this case, we're playing, you see below kind of the D sharp area. Here we have the D sharp area. And um, when we're playing only that upper note without the pitch band, we're staying above that. So having a little boost in there uh, could help. Obviously you want to do this with an EQ uh, that is transparent and that doesn't mess with your face a lot. I am just using this one for the tutorial just to kind of show you as an example what you can achieve here. So you'll do this and we'll set a Q. That's a bit lower. Alternatively, uh, another way you can do it is instead, if you don't want to worry about face issues and those kind of things, you can use a utility and just add a slight gain boost towards the end here. If you're still having trouble with it not translating well. So you could do something like this. Uh, let's make it a little bit more exaggerated so you can exactly hear what's going on. So those are some of the things you can do to make your glide notes uh, or the, those notes that have a portamento be a little bit more, um, you know, sit a little bit nicer in the mix. What I generally uh, recommend you do is take something like um, a group here and use an analyzer. Uh, for this one, what we can use is for example, signalizer. And signalizer has a oscilloscope here. And you generally want to use that one. Uh, if I open up the preset here, which I generally use for my oscilloscope, uh, if I can make it a bit bigger, I think I should be able to. Yeah, there we are. We'll take a look at what's happening here and then we'll go back here. Window size of a second. You can kind of see what's going on. And generally in this case, you want to take a look here. And you can see that the waveform is staying nice and, and uh, transparent in this case. So there isn't really, or nice and the same volume in this case. So there isn't really anything you have to do. Uh, but something you can do if that problem does occur is, uh, for example, this turning that on. And now you'll see it really turns that up. Um, so there's a lot of volume shaping and um, stuff that you can do in that kind of way. Um, so the general sound design isn't very interesting uh, here. Uh, I wanted to focus mainly on um, those kind of bendy parts of a bass line that you might have, especially with offbeat basses. Um, I hope this is interesting and I hope you find these kind of very specific tricks interesting as well. 
the video I did on sidechaining the last one wasn't really uh, received very well or not a lot of people watched it. Um, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time uh, really understanding what you guys want to see as like a group. I know individual people sent me a lot of requests, um, which I like to cover because that's a very nice way to interact with like the community and stuff like that. Um, but uh, when I want like a video that gets like a lot of reach, which is obviously something that everybody wants as somebody who does YouTube now, um, it is very hard to judge what you guys want to see like as a whole, as like the whole community. Um, so I'm hope this video is doing well and um, obviously I hope every video does well. Um, but I mainly hope that you guys kind of enjoy these very specific tips uh, that I'm bringing out um, ag again with this one as well. Um, so if you like the video, leave it a like. And if you're new here, subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.